Roy Cruz here, your life applications officer. Um, my phone is out of memory. I got to really clean out my phone. So, um, I'm going to do this video on my laptop, which as you can see, is a very cheap laptop. It costs me a very small amount of money. Um, oh, you can, oh, I don't want it way up there. I don't want it way up there either. That's good. You can actually edit this. Okay. That's good there. I think it's bad looking. But see that? That's bad. That's bad video quality right there. Anyway. Um. Getting back to, I'm going to do a part two, that's what this is, a part two of that dream that I had about a friend of mine, I'll call him my friend, um, here on YouTube, that he spends his time on YouTube looking for victims and new victims. And I could name me and a bunch of other um, people that he thinks are his victims. I'm not part of his victim package. I am guilty for letting him think that I'm part of his victim package, but I'm not part of his victim package. Yeah. Um, but I had a dream about him. Y'all know who I'm probably talking about. Had a dream about him, and I need to um, clarify some things from the other video. I want you to understand one thing: we, as the people of God, everything that we are anti about, and we are anti about almost everything that is non-biblical that is against the Bible contrary to the Bible we are anti about almost everything everything that there is used to have fun we're anti about it. we might even be anti about the beach because when you go to the beach you have to take clothes off and wear something that shows a lot of skin. Um, so, you know, it's just a conviction thing. Um, and that's how deep we go. Might even be anti about the beach. Some of us are. And I don't see a problem with that. Because I believe modesty is modesty. You can never be too modest. Unless you're a Muslim. <laughs> now, that's too modest. Anytime... Anytime you're so modest that you can't even tell whether you're a male or female, okay, and that's that's that, that there's a such thing as being too modest, okay. I don't know if you're a man in a dress or a, or a woman dressed up for Halloween, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, anytime it looks, anytime it's that bad, okay, that's too modest, okay. Uh, show a little bit of skin. It's okay, Muslim. You can show a little. You can show a little bit of hair on your head. You all right? That's enough. Look. Um. But anything that we are anti about, we are an anti because it is our culture to be anti. And we have good reason to abstain from these things. Okay, but see what atheists fail to recognize is that before the Lord, we were everything just like everybody else. We were everything from gay to jail time. Okay, to uh, conning people out of their money to drugs. From drugs to jail time. From jail time 
to death row. We were just like everybody else and even the worst of everybody else. Then we got saved and God set us free from all that stuff. And we recognized the steps that it took for us to become to that fallen state that we fell into that led us to jail or led us to death row or led us to um, contract AIDS or led us to lose our, our wife or, or, or be divorced or lose our relationship with our children or, or, or whatever it be. Lose all of our money and live homeless on the street. We, we investigated the steps it took for us to end up in that boat. And that's one of the things that we do that a lot of people of this world don't do. When they mess up, they don't go back and say, how did I end up in this situation? And investigate. And say, okay, that, you know, if eating meat is, is bad for you, then be a vegetarian by all means. If, pe if you're allergic to peanuts, stop eating them. If running gives you asthma, or you go into an asthma attack when you run, don't run. In a dream, it was dark when I went in, getting back to it. In a dream, it was dark when I went to the dream. The whole dream seemed like I was with this guy for about two or three days. But the whole time, it was dark. Now, you know, when the Bible talks about the kingdom of heaven, it says there is no night. It's light. Forever. No more night. There is no more night in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. I imagine it was so lit up in the kingdom of heaven. I had a dream that people made tents to not because they were hot and they needed shade because of the scorching sun. But I had a dream that people made tents in order to add uh, art to the beauty of the sun or to, you know, do something different than being it being daylight all the time. But even though you're under a tent, you know that you're outside and you know that it's always light out. And the light from the sun is shining under the shade. It's fine. But I, I dreamt that. And in this dream, about this brother that we all know. Um, his was the flip. It was dark where he was at. But he had this power and he had this fan club. He had these disciples. He had thousands of people, beautiful women under his authority and his power. And I tried to leave three times. The third time. I did leave. He wanted me to stay because he wanted me to live. He wanted to help me. But his way of helping me was for me to sacrifice what I believe. And he kept telling me, you, know, you don't have to sacrifice what you believe, Mr. Cruz. But, what well, there's no but. I 
I'm all the way with Jesus. No turning back. And it was lit up in the compound where he was at. And everything was in that compound. You know how dreams are. Everything was in that compound. There were apartments and hotel rooms in the compound. Extravagant places to go and study. You know, people in the world always have certain things that they stress, that they really, really magnify. And it goes to their head and makes them think that they've arrived because they have something tangible that they can use for prestige. They can use to build fans. They can use to build friends. They can use to make people love them and adore them and, and, and pay homage to them. You know, on my job, I have two two classes of people. People that pay homage to me because they know that they knew they know who I am compared to what I'm supposed to be doing, what my job is. And then others they feel that I'm trying to be something that I'm not because I'm black. I'm only five foot three and a half and I'm wearing this uniform. I'm wearing it tucked in and I walk down the hall in confidence. And a lot of people get the wrong idea and they think that I'm full of pride. They think that I'm trying to be some kind of hot shot security officer or whatever until they get to meet me. And then they flip it around and they try to become a bully. Because now at first it was kind of like ironic for me to be walking around like I'm confident. But then when they got to meet me and they seen a little bit of humility in there, then they wanted to flip it. Well, it ain't proper for him to be a little guy and be this nice either. But when you are six and a half feet tall or seven and you're built like that and you look like that and you got the nerve to be nice that's really 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 a plus should I be angry at God? no I'm none of that but should I be angry at God since I believe in him? no not angry at God God has a sense of humor I'm his funny side. <laughs> I'm his funny side. Okay. God had a sense of humor when he created me. Okay. He was trying to be a comedian when he, he thought God thought he was, uh, 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 Eddie Long, not Eddie Long. Um, Eddie Griffin when he created me. Okay. He thought he was, uh, uh, Richard Pryor or something. Okay. Um, But no, I love God. I feel like who I am, when you add that to the fact that God saved me. He saved me from the shame. He even saved me from short man syndrome. <clears throat> he did. He really did. He saved me from short man syndrome. He saved me from anger and he saved me from, he gave me a new way to deal with those that tried to, and every time somebody pulls that stunt with me, then I pray for that person. I'm, I'm able to forgive that person and God helps me to have new ways of dealing with people like that. So I'm waiting for somebody to stop me in the hallway again and ask me, excuse me, sir. If you don't mind me asking, how tall are you? Okay. I'm waiting for somebody to do that. I have a very godly, non-cuss word, non-angry, non-short man syndrome, non-violent way of answering this man next time he does that to me. Okay. <laughs> but this brother in the dream, he didn't have to go through any of that. But yet he had it all.
but it was my best interest. It was my best interest to depart from him. We even shook hands and went our separate ways. But yet he was angry. You could tell he was angry that I was leaving. And he was, he, you know, he would use his fan club to get to me. You know, this is all based on what he's already doing here on YouTube. But he would hook me up with these beautiful women that were a lot younger than me. They are young enough to be my daughters. Okay. And, you know, I showed interest in them, but I wouldn't let them touch me. When they would, you know, start touching me in this dream, that is, I would start talking about the Lord. He hated that. And I would start trying to evangelize these women, and they, you know, rubbing my back and my arm and all like that. I started to talk about the Lord and the goodness of the and he was he would object. He would say, Cruz, 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 Cruz. Listen, man. We're you know, you say you believe in love. I'm we're trying to love you. We're trying to you know, we're trying to be friends with you here. We're not trying to take anything away from you. And I'm like, okay, everybody sit down and get your hands off. Sit down. But they all were in it together and they were trying to pull me away from who I am as a Christian. And I'm going to say it again. Our love for the world is a cultural thing. It's not a bigotry thing. We are anti to a lot of things because okay because it is our culture and it is what makes us identify with our sacrifice, the sacrifice that we made to keep our bodies under subjection and practice the fruit of the spirit. Okay? So we have to be very anti about things. It's part of what makes us Christians. It's part of you know, identifying and showing the sacrifice there that we made a sacrifice. But we love everybody. We love everybody. But we're not your equal. We're not looking for equality between Christians and those that are not Christians. There's no way you can be our equal. Because if you can make the sacrifice, what's stopping you from being a Christian? Repentance is hard. When you don't believe you have anything to repent about. But yet you knew that you shouldn't have threw the first punch. You knew you shouldn't have said what you said. You knew that you shouldn't be married to who you're married to. You knew you shouldn't um, talk about all these different things like you do and talk about other people like you do. You know that you got an ego. You know that you're arrogant and prideful and haughty and full of vain, vain glory. You know that. But you refuse to repent. We live every day in a spirit of repentance. But in this dream, it was dark coming in and it was dark going out. At the end of the dream, I finally left on the third time trying to leave. 
third or fourth time. And I finally left. And when I got way out there, I'm driving and it's dark and I can't see. And finally, I started seeing a little bit of light. I start going in the direction of the light and it got brighter and brighter and brighter. Finally, there was one man. It seemed like in a whole entire planet, there was one man in a raincoat that was trying to get me to straighten my car up so I could go down this little driveway back out on into the main highway. I couldn't find a driveway, but that leaving and going back through the darkness to get to the light is symbolic of repenting, admitting that you made a mistake. And it's symbolic of enduring hardships till the end. And I made it. And once I got back into the light, even though where he was at, it was all lit up as well. But once I got back into the light, I began to stop feeling bad that I had left in the first place. The Bible says the devil comes in as an angel of light. And he used a YouTuber name. I'm not going to give you his name. You know, he knows who I'm talking about. I'm not going to give you his name. Okay. Um, God used him as a prop in his dream to remind me that the world without repentance will remain the world. You can say whatever you want to say, and it got ties in with the David Lynn videos I've watched where David Lynn tried to sow seed on bad ground. And that's not the way to evangelize. And, you and then he didn't even open his mouth before he got arrested. He got arrested for showing up. He got he got stuff thrown at him for for saying I love you. Why? Because you're in the wrong neighborhood. Didn't nobody invite you. You're on somebody's turf. They actually run these streets. And you. You didn't prepare the ground before you got there. Okay. You didn't make sure that the ground was yours. So there you have it. Um, wanted to clarify that. And in this stream, like I said, you know. There were. You know, lovely ladies, there was money involved, there was a beautiful hotel room that I stayed in, there was, everything was in this building. This building represents his kingdom, his power and authority that he had here on this planet. But even though it looks dumb being a Christian, this is what I got out of this dream too. It looks really, really dumb for me to be a Christian. It looks very cowardish. It looks very, very boring to be a Christian. It looks very, very boring, okay, to eat salad. For days and weeks so that you can lose weight. But it works. Okay. It looks very evil even. To tell people. Like I almost got attacked. For telling somebody that I'm not a fornicator. Okay. It looks very devilish to tell people. To insinuate to people if that's what I was doing. What I don't believe in. I don't believe in the things that they believe in. But it is our culture. It is our sacrifice. It is what Christians do. It is who we are. We are the ones that made the sacrifice. We are the ones that sold ourselves. We sold ourselves to Jesus. A lot of people say they sold their soul to the devil. 
Well, we gave our souls back to Jesus. He already gave them to us. But we gave our souls back to Jesus. We didn't have to sell them because they're priceless. God already gave us our souls. We gave them back. That's the difference. And I think that's enough said. Um, we love everybody in the world. We don't hate anybody. We don't try and judge people. That's God's job. But we do abstain. We do try to keep our salt, our uh, our cultures separate. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know that. Um. Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And this is what this dream was also symbolic of. Now this brother is in this big compound. It's lit up. He's got all his fans and friends and family and you know, all these things that you could want in, in life right in that compound. He doesn't even leave, need to leave the compound for anything. Isn't it like the world today, everybody puts themselves in a box, a box that they feel is keeping them safe and keeping them happy and, and, get, and helping them express their best. But yet it's wrong for Christians to put themselves, and that's was what this dream was all about. It's wrong for me to be in this box. But this brother's in a compound. But it's wrong for me to be in this box. He wanted me to get out of the box and live a little bit. But this brother's living in a compound. He doesn't leave the compound. Oh, and him being in that compound and never leaving that compound is symbolic of people in the world having their comfort zones wherever they are in control. And where they are in power, even to other people's hurt. Even if they have to step on other people to have that prestige and that power and that popularity and that money or whatever. Even if it means they step on other people and do damage to other people for life. To them, this is life. It's not a bad thing. It's just business. But I'm not allowed to do that as a Christian. My, my relationship with God is all about sacrifice. I sacrifice everything to my own hurt. I said some good things here. I'm glad I had this dream. And last but not least, the dream is symbolic too. Of Christians. Who have a habit of. Wanting it, I've already said this, wanting it to be beautiful because the world is beautiful. They want it to be beautiful. They want it to look so good when they go out there and preach the gospel. They want to be noticed. They want to be heard. David Lynn did the string tonight arguing with the Hebrew Israelites. They would not let him speak. So he finally left. And lo and behold, the Hebrew Israelite guy got arrested. Because he encouraged somebody to throw eggs into the crowd. Idiot, 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 stupid, stupid, stupid. But, you know. Um, God loves the Gentiles. He loves the heathen. He loves the sinner man. He wants them to be saved. But my family and my friends and my fan club are all people of the kingdom. That is my culture. Okay. I'm not going to act like I don't understand why you need to be gay. I'm not going to act like I don't understand how you found love. Because I do. I'm not going to act like I don't understand and I'm just being misjudged. But you seem to forget that before you are a Christian, you are a what? 
You're a sinner. You're a Gentile. You're an infidel. That is where the atheists are dumb. We weren't born Christian. Yeah, sure, maybe we were born in a church. But everybody, every child, and I said this in other videos, every child makes a decision before he's really ever an adult. By the time he's somewhere between 14 and 18, he makes a decision whether he wants to follow the God of his parents or follow another and none at all. Whether he wants to be an atheist, whether he wants to be a Jehovah's Witness, a Mormon, a Mason, or Christian, whatever. He makes a decision or he decides not to make any decision and be biased about everything. But the thing is, we all were people of the world. We all were people of the devil before we ever came to Christ. I get sick and tired of people acting like, oh, we never lived a little bit. We just came out of our mother's womb and, we're, and we, we are Christians. We never went out there and lost our virginity. We never ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We all ate from the tree of knowledge of, of good and evil, just like Adam and Eve did. That's why all of us, just like Adam and Eve, have to be expelled from the glory and obtain that glory all over again. We all have to repent, just like Adam and Eve had to repent. We have to repent. That's the program. That's how it goes. Okay? It's not about all this indoctrination crap. It's about sacrifice. And it's about a relationship to where you don't dishonor what you are a part of. Just like if you're in the military, you don't leave your man behind. You don't DOA or or go or what is it? Go, you know, MIA. You fight to the end. You stand there next to your, your guys. You ride together. You fight together. You die together. Okay? You don't call yourself a soldier and then go in there and run away like a sissy. It's the same way with being a Christian. We make sacrifice. We plan to die over that sacrifice. Whether it be Christian persecution or whether it be natural causes, we are going to die living out that sacrifice. Why is that so hard to understand? But because we open our mouths like you don't open your mouths, like you don't talk hogwash, like you don't say things that are offensive to the Christian community. But we got a right to open our mouth and let our voice be heard either. As well, and and if we don't agree with something, we have a right to say so. Just like you have a right to say you don't agree with us. God bless you. I'm D. Recruit your life applications officer. Just wanted to spit a little bit more tonight about that dream. I think I got it all out. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon. In Jesus' name.